the, the Antichrist comes out from under this devil's head cave at the end of this video. In another scene, he comes out from under the church cave. Okay, he comes out from that cave here. Behind him, you're going to see this church cave. This is showing you the Antichrist doctrine. The biggest danger in this film is the Antichrist doctrine, the deception of the Antichrist doctrine to present people the mark of the beast based upon the lie of transcendence. Okay, they see behind him is this church cave. Notice, too, uh, he's got this pyramid with the capstone at the top. Now, typically, you'll see the eye up here in the capstone. That represents the all-seeing eye. Okay, they're getting this influence by the spirit being who's in, uh, not in this natural realm. Okay, that's what this barbed wire is showing you here. He's separated. The all-seeing eye, even though uh, giving inf influential information. I mean, you see at the beginning. The goat with the 666 on his forehead is inside of a barbed wire fence and he's hypnotizing uh, those on the outside. Well, he's locked behind this barbed wire fence and in the abyss. Uh, and then the rest of the pyramid equates to uh, the populace, the lower rungs of the Illuminati system. Okay, he's influencing all those, you know, but the barbed wire disappears that means there's no longer any separation there he is here incarnate okay watch it disappear so this where it was separated and a spiritual influence to these people i mean this is where they get their insight from they're influenced by satan okay this the spiritual influence now that bar wire is separated so now he's here there's no longer any separation now behind him you see this church cave Okay, you see this cave right here with the spiral and the circular pane glass. This is showing you out, you know, the cave that the historic Jesus came out of. All right. It sounds complicated, but listen, this is their doctrine that there is life after death, but it's not one that is sequential, i.e. you die and then, you know, you just stay, you know, living as a ghost somewhere or whatever while people live their lives. It is transcendence beyond time and space. That way you could go back in the past. So he comes out from the devil's head cave at the end and then this church collapses. But notice this cave, the spiral with the circle pane glass at the top. That's where he comes out of here. Okay. He's leaving the cave here, but it's the spiral with the stained glass at the top. He's leaving out from under that church cave in this example. Why is he leaving out of th this cave here, the devil's head cave, at the end? Okay. Because it is showing you transcendence. This is the Gnostic doctrine. This is the Antichrist doctrine. That's why the Bible says in 1 John 4 that the one who says Jesus is not come in the flesh, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Because the way that they are presenting it is this, okay, that Jesus is a transcendent being. He came at the end of time, the last days is the Antichrist, but he transcends time and space and comes back in the past through Mary, through a virgin, not as a real man, not as having real flesh, but the Bible says in Hebrews 2 that for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself took part of the same. So he did have flesh and blood while he was here, and he really died. Okay, All this is true. He was a real man. Okay. But they painted out that he was not a real man. This is not new. This is Gnosticism. Okay, But understand what they're saying here. Transcendent. So Jesus, you don't see anybody come out of this cave. He comes out of Devil's Head Cave. You don't see anybody come out of this cave. This cave collapses. So this, him coming out of this cave has already occurred in time past. You follow what I'm saying? It's already occurred. Nobody comes out. He's here. Nobody's coming out. This collapses. This cave is over with. But he came out in time past. This is where the historic Jesus, according to their corrupted version of the gospel, came out. This is where the Antichrist comes out. So they're saying they, they are the same being. They are saying. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2 that the Antichrist will come and claim himself that he is God. 
they are going to, this is where, this is how they're going to explain the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So they're going to say three different beings or however many multidimensional beings there are, but one person or, or th all these persons, one being. Okay. Because they're going to say Jesus is the Father, but a transcendent version of him. It's like time travel. You see these time travel movies where somebody goes back in the past and they see their self, but they're the same person. But one of them is a more advanced futuristic version. That's what this is showing you here. That's why it shows you uh, this ascended version of him impregnating himself, you know, incarnating himself. This is him. He blows the fire to impregnate this egg. And here he comes the Antichrist, after this impregnated egg. And it says raw here on the wall. Again, it ties into the sun deity. That's what it, the Pharaoh was in the Egyptian days, the uh, incarnation of the sun. Ra ties into the sun deity. That's what this ties into too. That's, what, that's why we have December 25th, a pagan holiday merged in with Christianity. That's what all this ties into. Paganism, false beliefs, merged in with Christianity and then trying to say it's the same thing okay because December 25th is not Jesus actual birthday that is tied into you know the celebration of the birth of the sun s-u-n tied into winter solstice because the sun goes down low at its weakest and then the year starts again because it begins to rise up okay that's what that equates to but you see he impregnated the egg and he comes out under the egg. So you have an ascended version. You have an egg impregnated. You have him coming out under the egg. Same person. Okay. Now he's the incarnation of this fire that was breathed down. You get what I'm saying? It's the same person. So they could say Jesus is the father, but they're two different persons, but they're the same being because they are from different times or in different dimensions. The Father is the ascended or elevated, you know, higher up version of Jesus, whereas the Antichrist is a lesser ascended version. But he's going to teach us how to ascend in the end through the mark of the beast and then go back in time historically and come out of the uh, cave, the church cave, not as a real man. Okay. So I want you to understand this transcendent doctrine. This is. I'm going to break this video short. This is what we need to uh, understand and comprehend. We need to prepare for this because it's going to be very convincing. Look, when he comes out of the end, you see what this is? Scorpion stinger. You see this right hand in it? The, the Bible says the, the mark of the beast will be received in the right hand or in the forehead. That's what it's showing you here in Revelation chapter 9. Okay. Revelation chapter 9, I'm going to go through, this is going to be the first of several parts, but in Revelation chapter 9, it talks about the stinger of the scorpion. They had the power to torment man, the, the power, their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. This is talking about those disembodied spirits that come up out of the abyss in Revelation 9. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Okay. This is going to be a deception because men will not be able to die. Okay. Now, what this means is if you look in the book of Enoch, which Jude quotes in the book of Enoch, chapter 15, it explains the origin of demon spirits that roam the earth. Okay. And it is the remainder of the Raphim, the descendants of the Nephilim. Okay, it talks about in Genesis 6, they had children. And that's where all these legends of Apollo and Hercules and all that come from. They were giants, famous people. Okay. But they had children. And these uh, hybrids of the Nephilim and humans were genetic modifications, corrupted genetic modifications through sexual intercourse. And Enoch chapter 15 shows how after they die their spirits would roam the earth okay now they still i mean you see in the bible they still inhabit men they still speak through men etc so it looks like they have transcended their body and in a sense they have okay but they it's not a transcendence beyond time and space okay and but that's what it's going to be pitched as and so 
whereas in time past this was performed through sexual intercourse in the last days the modification is going to come through injection and that's what he says and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man okay the mark of the beast by injection john a first century ad christian would not have seen this and said seen them injecting things in a vision and said they used hy hypodermic needles he wouldn't have said that he didn't say it's like a, a, a snake when it bites a man because that's two fangs. But when you're injecting somebody with a needle, it's one point of injection. And he says they had stings like scorpions. It's like a scorpion when it strikes a man. That's And then that's going to result in their torment five months. And in those days, men will seek death, but death will flee from them. So after you get this mark of the beast, you don't get it, but I'm using you as a general term. After people get this mark of the beast, they will not be able to die. Their spirit, like the spirit of the Nephilim or the spirit of the Raphim in Enoch chapter 15 will continue to exist on this earth. And so it will look like, hey, they're still around. They're still able to inhabit a body or speak through whatever, a clone. I don't know how they're going to do it. But you get what I'm saying. It is going to look like transcendence beyond life and death. Oh, this guy got killed, but his spirit's still here. There's proof, just like the demons were able to show there's proof that the spirit's still here so he's transcended his body oh the mark of the beast is real it does teach us how to transcend there's going to be great deception okay and i'm going to get into that a little bit more but i want you to understand the basis of the antichrist doctrine as we proceed in this series because i can't make long videos apparently on this subject i don't even know if this one's going to get cut off because every time i try to make a long video on the subject now it gets cut off okay but this is the basic understanding, and they will use scripture to try to back this up, okay? This is how the Antichrist is going to claim to be God, a transcendent, a lesser transcendent version of the Father, the Son, and they're going to tie it all together.